Hey everyone, Kevin here. What I'd like to do in this video is show you how you can change the power supply in your PC. In my PC I have a 650 watt PSU and I will be changing it to a 1000 watt PSU. So I'm going to document the whole thing and show you exactly what I do and when I do it etc. Firstly, apologies about audio. I'm recording directly from the, the mics in, in the Sony RX100 Mark III that I'm recording with just now. I'd like to improve the audio but from a time perspective I really don't have time to even record this if I'm honest and this is really just a quick video so it's just easier for me to you know, record everything as I go through than do it separately. So without further ado let's see what the situation is and I'll explain what I'm trying to do. So this is my PC, this is what's running just now, I've got all the fans running and you can probably hear those fans so first thing I'm going to do is turn it off. So I'll turn it off here. When that has switched off, what I'm going to do is I'll take all the cables off and then I'll take the power out and I'll switch the, the power unit at the end as well. So, this part here, the button. So once that's off, it should go down soon. Very time consuming. So, um, this is the power supply unit that's there. That is what's in just now. And with that out, I can take out the power supply. So I need to take off all the cables. Put those over those, over those, over there. Don't need those. So right now, the power supply, which you should be able to see down there, is the Evca uh, Supernova 650G2. Very happy with it, it's a gold, supply so it's about 90% efficiency I'm upgrading to this one which is a thousand watts and it is titanium so we're getting around 96% efficiency so it's a lot better I'll turn this monitor off as well don't need that um, the graphics card that you see here the one that was running there is this Asus GeForce it's Asus Strix Gaming 1080 Ti overclock edition and it's got lots of fancy colours and the one that's coming tomorrow is the exact same one, and it you know it does it can draw a lot of uh, power, so that's why I'm opting for this. Okay, first the bad news: unless you are replacing a PSU with the exact same one, the chances are the cables can't be used. The cables aren't interchangeable. So we're talking about the large ATX motherboard uh, power cable. We're talking about the the CPU cable, etc and um, you know things for like SATA and all these kind of things these unfortunately can't be reused in fact I searched online a lot of people were saying even Evca 650 watt PSUs all their cables for example the G2 couldn't be used with a uh, one of their other ones like the P2 or thing, things like that there is always misinformation online but the fact that I'm jumping from a gold 650 G2 to a 1000 titanium supply I don't think it's worth taking the risk uh, using the older cables, so I'm going to have to take all the cables back out. Now that doesn't sound like it's a major inconvenience, but if you look in here, you will see a CPU cable down there. And it is impossible to get to because of my large air cooler. So, there's two ways around this. One is to take the whole motherboard out and then have to connect all the fans, all the connections, connect everything again. That's one option. The other option is to take the air cooler, air cooler out. Uh, the problem with that is what I'll need to do is then take the CPU out and then clean off the thermal paste and reapply the thermal paste. So whatever I do, it's a pain in the ass, but it's unfortunately something that I need to do. So when you're doing this and if you're ever doing this make sure you use an anti-static band if you can when you're doing anything this is an anti-static mat and you can also attach it to you know the metal part of your PC so I've taken off the front of my case it kind of just sits like that and I've taken off the side that was very easy to take off you can see a lot of these thicker motherboard power cables have all been tied up well kind of tied it tied up and tidied up at the side here as best as I can but um, the best thing I think to do is to take them out of the power supply first if I can it means that if I'm pulling it out from the board I'm not connected to the PSU so I'm not having to worry about pulling anything uh, I'll have a little bit more freedom to pull cables once they're actually out of the PSU so I'll start pulling them out just now so all the cables have been pulled out I pulled out the power cable 
all the VGA cables and I had a SATA and peripheral cable but you can see here th those are lying there because they weren't actually connected to anything yet so those are out and I need to take these off the motherboard now and then I'll set them down there so I've pulled out the VGA cables pulled out the, the motherboard cable they're all lying around there the last one is the CPU cable and it is impossible to get to so what I need to do is take off this air cooler and you can see in my hand, I have thermal paste left, thankfully. So I'm going to have to take this off for now, set it to the side, connect everything back up and then at the end, put this air cooler back on. So I've taken out the air cooler, it's sitting over there and you can see this is the CPU cable that I'm trying to get to and before it was it was tucked away behind the shroud so that you know to hide the cable but this uh, be quiet fan is getting in the way so I think I was you know I, my initial idea was to take this fan out. The problem is I've used the kind of anti-vibration pinholes and maybe I just don't have the nails for it but these are very very difficult to come to, to get out. So what I'm doing now is feeding this through and hopefully I can get my finger through into there to pull this out. Well, it took me a minute or two but I managed to eventually get my finger in and pull it out. Thank God for that. So all the power connectors from my older 650D2 have been removed and I just need to put them now in this little carry case that they provide. So now we need to get the old PSU out of my PC. The cables have been disconnected and I just need to take the actual PSU out. So it comes out very easily like that. But what I need to do is disconnect it from this casing here. So this part will attach to my new PSU once I get out of the box. So this is the old PSU, this is the Evka Supernova 650G2. You can see it's got the CPU, the motherboard, two VGA connections, but I need two 8 pins for my graphics card, so I could only have one in the system there. I've got SATAs, three SATA and one peripherals, and it's got an equal option as well. Time to put it in the box, and I will use this in the future, so it's, it's uh, worth keeping it in good condition, because I will use it again in another build very soon. So this is the new power supply guys, this is my 1000 watt titanium T2, Terminator 2, looks pretty good, so all I have to do now is get it open. So presentation is very, well it's identical, I was going to say it's very similar, it's identical to the G50, the 650G2, sorry, that I had previously. And that's one of the reasons why I went with Edgar again. I was very happy with the, the, the carry cases, with the manuals, with the quality of the cables, and with the fact they get very long warranties. I think the warranty on this is like 10 years. So, the new PSU is in here. It's goddamn heavy. So it looks the same at the front. 1000 T2, 80 plus titanium. It's got an eco mode again, and you can see that there are a lot more ports than there were last time. In fact, what we'll do is we'll take the old one out and I'll show you. So this is the T2 and this is the G2. This is the 1000 watt T2. This is the 650 watt G2. You can see in the old one I had the motherboard connection, I had the CPU connection, 
two VGA, which does my one 1080T, three SATA and one peripheral. It's very, very different over here. On the T2, we've actually got six VGA ports, so this could power three 1080Ti's or multiple uh, lower power graphics cards. I've got two CPU, we've got three SATA, and then we've got two peripheral or SATA. There's still an equal button, and then you've got the ATX motherboard connection there as well. Same size of fan and all that as well, so no difference there. Double ball bearing. So at the other side of the box we've got all the accessories. We've got another cable carry case. Good to see. We've got the power. Something which I still have over there. And then we've got all the cables. Now there are a huge number of cables there. Look at the number of cables there. But thankfully the booklet will tell us what those cables are. So there it's here, we've got the EFCA power supply, we've got the EFCA manual, this one, four mounting screws, one EFCA PSU tester, cable bag, 24 pin ATX cable, 8 pin EPS ATX CPU cables, there's two of them, there's four VGA cables, two 6 pin plus 8 pin VGA cables, three SATA cables, two, three Molex cables, and Molex to Molex or Molex, I don't know. Molex to FDD adapter and one power, uh, power cord, which is this. So, enough small talk, let's get this into the PC and we'll add more power to it. So, what I need to do is take the PSU and slide it into my PC via the, the back casing, etc. But it makes more sense to attach the cables first, so I need to look at what cables I need and then attach them. So the first cable I've got here is the, the main power cable, the, the main motherboard cable. Just a matter of attaching it in. My motherboard also needs a CPU cable. So the CPU power cable, that's the annoying one at the end, next to the fan. So I need to connect that up. Finally, what I need to connect is four VGA cables. So one, two, three, four. Now, I only need two 8-pin connectors just now, but my other graphics card, this will be coming tomorrow, another one. And that those uh, graphics cards require two 8-pin connectors, so there's, that's for one graphics card, that's for the other. Now there's a lot of other cables lying around here but I don't need them just now. I'm using two M2 SSDs so I don't need to connect any SATAs, I don't have any other peripherals, I don't need a second CPU cable. So what I'm going to do is put all of these in the box and then later on if I need the cables I can just go back into my PC and connect them. Time to slide this into the PC. Might seem obvious to well most people but just make sure that you've got the fan coming out the bottom as an exhaust. You don't want the hot air blowing back into your PC. So I've turned the PC over, I've got the area, it's the back of the PC where the back panel would be, not the tempered glass. So the power supply is here, all the cables are coming through. This is VGA 3 and 4. So what I'm going to do just now is just put a cable tie around it because this is for the graphics card which is coming tomorrow. So just putting a cable tie around this will remind me that this is for the one that's coming tomorrow. I've connected just now just so I don't have to go through this again tomorrow though. It wouldn't have been too difficult to do that. The motherboard one is going to come through the shroud and it's going to come through here. Um, maybe there. Actually, I'll need to check that. And I'll go through and I'll go di directly to the motherboard. The CPU, uh, that's in fact, that's the other VGA cable. So the other two VGA cables 
Um, in fact, that's the CPU cable. So that's the CPU cable. This goes to the top right here, and this is the one that I need to slide through again. And the other one is um, the two VGA cables. So this is going to the graphics card, which is currently in. So I just need to feed them through, put them through the, the, the correct shroud, and then connect them to the board. So the cables are connected up, and I've tried to very quickly tidy the cables up. I'm not going to win any awards for cable management, but doesn't look too bad. So I've put on the back panel and I've connected all the cables up. The CPU cable is going up here and if you remember this is the cable that forced me to take off this air cooler because the air cooler once it's on I can't get to that cable. I've got the, the main ATX motherboard power here, I think, was that 24 pin? I've got two 8 pin connectors going into my 1080 Ti and there's another one of those coming tomorrow which is when I will put in these VGA cables here, this is VGA 3 and 4 and you know I'm not 100% happy with the cable management just now I might have to spend some time tidying it up a little bit. It's not too bad. Um, what I was thinking about originally was to put the VGA 3 and 4 around the back and then come through this space here but it doesn't really make any sense to do that because if you can see the space here if you put another one there it's going to be very very tight and there's already cables going through there. So what I'm going to do, um, the PSU is down there and I think we'll just come up directly and connect like that. If that doesn't work I'll come up over the top and I'll, I'll do it a little bit differently but my main concern down here is the fact that I've got a, a fan down here, a 120mm intake fan blowing cold air up the way and there's a lot of cables there which is you know just by design the PSU, the fan is there, it's going to happen but I'd like to maybe tidy that up a little bit so um, well I just don't like cables being so close to the fan at the moment it is kind of uh, crazy down there, it's a little bit mad so now I need to remove the thermal paste a lot of people recommend this one, uh, Arte Clean, and it helps to remove all the thermal paste. But I don't have time to wait a few days to get that delivered. So I went to my friend's house, Mark. It's a 20 minute drive away and I got this isopropyl alcohol. A lot of people recommend this and they say it's just as good. So I'm going to be using this. So the air cooler has been cleaned, all the thermal paste has been removed, just need to do it from the CPU now. So with everything cleaned up I just need to reapply the thermal paste and then put on the large air cooler. So now what I need to do is attach this air cooler fan to the air cooler and I do that using these little attachments. So this little annoying fan holder is very difficult to get in because I can't get round because of the graphics card so it has to come out.
So I finally got the air cooler fan back on. It's very, very annoying. Once I got it on, I just popped the graphics card back on. The problem is, like with this fan, is when you stretch it over, these little attachments pop out. So you, you get this one on fine, you get this one just when you're pulling this part on, pops out, you need to go back to the start and start again. And I must have spent about 20 minutes doing that. But thankfully, it is complete now, and all I need to do is just tuck this fan cable behind to get out of the way a little bit. And I think we're good to go. So everything is connected. I just need to turn it on. Red power light shows you that everything is okay as far as power goes. Everything is spinning and everything is looking okay. So there's not much happening here, but I did notice one little thing here. I'm not really doing much, so it is expected for the GPU temperature to be quite low, but the CPU temperature is really low as well. Before I was seeing a lot higher, you know, I was seeing maybe 32, 33, 34 when it was idle. Right now it's sitting about 25 degrees, 24, and the fans are very quiet. So it looks like taking out this annoying air cooler and it is very annoying. I probably spent 30 minutes with these damn little fan attachments, but reapplying the thermal paste has led to much lower temperatures. So one good thing came out of taking this air cooler out. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and watch me replace the PSU in my main PC. I went from the EVGA or EVGA, I've been calling it EVGA, EVGA Supernova 650G2 to the EVGA Supernova 1000T2 went from 650 watts to 1000 watts this, oh, if I can get it this one cost me, my original one cost me about 110 I think, maybe 120 pounds and my new PSU costs 250 pounds that is to be expected, when you go from you know like 550, 650 up to 850, 1000, 1200 watts for a PSU the price goes up and it's the same for efficiency. I went from the gold standard that was about 90% or 88-90% efficiency. I'm now getting 94-96% efficiency. So it takes about a year or two or maybe more to get those, um, you know, that efficiency back in, uh, in price because you're paying a premium to get that efficiency but in the long term you will get it back and you know you get a 10 year guarantee with EFGA and apparently they're, they're fantastic for returns. And apparently they do like send you cables etc if those break. So I was happy with the, the 650G2 and I'm sure I'll be happy with uh, the 1000T2. So, is this difficult to do? No. But, you can run into problems. The, the main one that you saw with me um, was with this, my air cooler. From a performance point of view, I love this air cooler. From a noise level point of view, I love this air cooler. From a practicality point of view, uh, it's very annoying. Taking it off and putting it back on is a pain because of this, you know, see the little attachments at the side? They're very, very annoying. When I first put that on, I had it out of the case. I had it all out of the, the motherboard. It was on the motherboard, but it was out of the case. So I could get it to, to it from all angles. And even doing it then, it was difficult. The reason being, you've got one at each side. When you put it around one side, you put it on the other and it holds. You put the other one in, and in order to get the other one secured, the other attachment of the fan, what you have to do is pull it and then tighten it up to make sure everything uh, is secure. But when you do that, the other one pings off. So you put one in, that could take 10 minutes because it's all fidgety. You get it in eventually, and you go to the other side, and you get in, you're, yes, I've got it, and then it pings out again, and you're back to square one. This was more difficult um, with the in the case. Now you saw in the video there that I took out my graphics card and I put it back in. What I didn't show you was that just after I was about to, just after I recorded that clip, I was about to switch it on, the, the back clip pinged out. Maybe it wasn't secure enough. So I had to do it again. This time I didn't take out the graphics card. I managed to somehow get it attached and it took like another 15, 20 minutes. So I think if I had like an all-in-one pump, if I didn't have an air cooler that was 
so annoying to kind of reattach. I reckon, you know, realistically it should have taken me maybe an hour to do. Because of the air cooler, I probably spent at least an, an hour, maybe 40 minutes, 45 minutes an hour on attaching that air cooler alone. And I forgot about, can I get? I forgot about this. I forgot about the isopropyl, isopropyl, how do you say that? Isopropyl alcohol. I forgot about that. I hadn't ordered it. And my friend, I phoned him and he thankfully had a very large bottle of it. So I was, you know, it was 20 minutes drive over there and then we sat for an hour talking and then I came back. So, you know, I have spent all night on it, but if I had the, if I had the liquid, I'll just call it a liquid so I don't misspeak again. If I had that to remove the thermal paste and if I didn't have an, a very annoying fan on, or fan attachment on the air cooler, I reckon an hour to do it. Um, the one benefit out of all of this, apart from having additional power, which is going to allow me to get this second graphics card in tomorrow, which I can overclock both and get a lot of power. The one benefit I would say is right now, looking at uh, CPU temperatures, I'm getting very, very low temperatures. I don't know why, because I applied thermal paste the exact same way as I did last time, but for whatever reason, I'm honestly getting about 7, 8, maybe even 9 degrees lower when the computer's are idle. So I've done nothing different. I've just cleaned the, the, the CPU, reapplied the thermal paste, and I'm getting lower temperatures. And that's good because it means I can get more power from it. It means I can run the fans quieter. And yeah, really, really happy with that. So thanks for watching, guys. I really do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I realize it has been a long tutorial. I realize the audio has been very bad because I've been lazy and I've been recording as I've went along. But hopefully, Anyone who is in the same position who is changing a PSU or some, well, hopefully you got something out of it, even if it's just one or two little things that you didn't know before. So if you get any questions, please do stick them below and I'll do my best to answer them or point you in the right direction. And until next time, thumbs up, in fact, double thumbs up. Speak to you soon, guys. Cheers.